What's going on guys, Rockley AC here, bringing you guys my deck profile and tournament reports from the Win A Case event uh, out in Portage. Um, this was an event that was hosted by the uh, Portage Indiana crew, uh, Team Karasu, uh, aka David Alboron, Ruben Lopez and them out there uh, in the Midwest. Uh, it was an amazing event, it was basically a whole day thing, and um, this was the first major midwest tournament i think we've had in a long time uh outside of bandai's structured events um this was initially going to be a two box event but if we hit the threshold of 27 players uh it would be bumped up to tw um, a case event um being the guy that david is and with the um uh knowledge of knowing that there would have been um a 27 uh, and up attendance, uh, he decided to bump up the event uh, for a case event. So first place literally won a, a whole case, six boxes. I think that's like 144 packs. Second place got half a case, three boxes or four boxes, I think. Um, third and fourth got two boxes. And then fifth through eight got a box. So essentially this event was literally like a three case event. Um, and totaling up all of the expenses uh, with the cases, uh, the food that was purchased, um, the gas cards and gift cards that were given away, um, it was nearly a 1k event. So this whole thing was basically a nice 1k event. It was free. Uh, prizing was broken. Um, you know, this, this tournament's been advertising for three weeks, and we were able to get 21 people. Um, it may not seem like something large, but for a game that's been dead... Um, especially in the Midwest, you know, that, that's huge. So it was a great event. Um, and majority of the cards were actually sponsored by uh, Crux Cards. Um, and right now, if you guys don't know already, Crux Cards is uh, giving away a 10% off discount that you could use at their online retail store, uh, which is amazing because a lot of their deals are already great anyways. Uh, for a lot of their packs, you could get like a Weapons of War box for like 25 bucks. Slap on 10%, um, you know, that's like 21. So you could still get a lot of physical cards out there who, uh, for people who are still planning on getting cards. Um, I think it's a great resource um, and vendor to um, start your collection up again or if you want to open up boxes or sealed product. Uh, it's a great way to get back your cards and play within your community. Um, so let's talk about the uh, whole event, I guess, uh, from the beginning. I mean, uh, me and my team, Lake County... Uh, me, Charlie, uh, and Alex met up. Um, I picked up Alex in the morning, and then we were going to be uh, heading towards Indiana. Uh, we also got uh, Zeke and uh, Kayana uh, sorry, um, along the way. And basically, us five were um, trapped in a car, but it was nice. Uh, it was it was uh, good times to bond and stuff, and... Uh, it really reminded us of, of, of just traveling for Naruto back in the day. So it was pretty cool. And um, it was about like an hour and a half to two hour drive um, on our way to Ohio from um, suburbs of Illinois, uh, passing Chicago and stuff. So it was great to uh, kind of travel again and, and just, just like talk Naruto and prep for the event. Um, for the event itself... Uh, it was great. We got there like at 10 o'clock, I think. Um, the venue was was awesome. It was at a it was inside a library, uh, but a separate building, separate room, and uh, the space was um, amazing. You know, it was very spacious. We had a lot of room uh, for play and and casual and just walking around and talking and all that stuff. So space was uh, great, and the way that the tournament ran was very professional. Um, I don't think anybody complained at all. Uh, the 21 people that were there, um, there were even judges there too. So I think I think there was like two or three people that were on standby, also, um, and people who were like friends and stuff that were just just there. Um, we had a mixture of beginners who started literally the day of, and also veterans who've been playing since like set 10 and 11. So we've had a good mix of competition. Um, I think. Half of the tournament there uh, were players who've been playing since back in the day. Um, 
some of them like like one or two of them just started uh that day and then i think a handful of them started uh recently like the past couple months so it was a good mixture of people and you really saw that throughout the tables and through the top matches um, um but yeah everything went really smooth we had four rounds um we had raffles in between uh, we had a lunch that was free courtesy of um a subway little caesars and again david and his donations and um refreshments and all that stuff so it was really good i mean uh overall it was great experience and i think the event ran from basically 11 we started like probably like 10 45 till 4 30 and then we had to move to um a separate building because the library is closing but uh it was it was nice that david had already had a uh had already booked a separate room uh, at a hotel that was like three minutes down the street so that, that was very convenient for everybody to travel down there uh it was a separate room uh big enough room to have about i think like 20 people in it um so we were in there um to finish top eight um we did a lot of deck profiles, we did a lot of pack openings, um, had our top eight, we had some uh, dinner too, I think David was out grilling hot dogs and burgers, and, and we were just having a good time, and we we ended up staying till like um, one o'clock, I mean, or like midnight, I think, I forgot, but I think we got home like at two o'clock in the morning, but um, you know, we were just having a great time, catching up, trading, playing games, casual uh, just talking and and really just uh, bonding. So it was an incredible event. Um, it was um, the takeaway from it was much larger than I thought it would be. You know, just being able to link up with Naruto players and talk about stuff back in the day and and you know what you used to run and and what you're running now. You know, and, and it's just um it's a great feeling. And and I hope other people out there really get the opportunity to come out to these events. Um, and if you don't live in the Midwest, you know, we, we do hope you try your best to help start up your community. And if you need help what, if, if in prizing, you know, with like boxes and stuff, just hit us up, hit David up. Um, we could probably help donate, you know, um, some uh, packs for you guys or boxes or, or whatever to help jumpstart your community. Um, and, and I really like what David's doing with his uh, his area is that he's, you know, utilizing the library as a, as a resource to um, use a venue to hold these tournaments, you know. Um, it may not be the most ideal um, because he'd rather maybe have a card shop, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of benefits for having um, a, a, something like a library where you're able to get maybe donations from other uh, vendors or uh uh, you know like food restaurants who can donate food maybe for your events like david's been doing or um you know having the ability to use a space um for tournaments you know it's it's a good event and i know it's not um officially sanctioned you know but uh it's it's a grassroots movement everybody knows this game's been dead for four or five years already so any type of um location that's suitable uh, I think is 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 good and and something like a library I think um, you know makes sense. So if you guys are starting a, a tournament up or like an OP thing in your area, uh, really consider a library if you're not able to get a card shop. Um, if you're not able to get somebody that um, isn't able to host a tournament at their um, you know locals. Uh, but yeah, um, awesome event and it basically led to this. Uh, friendship relationship thing that I have with David and the crew uh, because now we're going to be able to have larger events and we're going to work well with each other and other people in the community who are looking forward to bringing back Naruto in their areas so we look forward to helping with uh, others who are interested in starting up their locals you know as long as you have like six seven eight people who are just you know interested or dedicated I think um, you know you could you could really have a good run there so yeah, enough of my talking. Everybody knows that, um, and I know you've already seen all these videos of me in the past month or so. So I'm sure you're tired. But um, let's go straight to the deck profile after this ten minutes of talking, and uh, I'll let you know um, my card choices. So going to the tournament, I didn't know what to run. Uh, uh, Tayop um, is still working on behind the scenes. I know they've been really busy since Gen Con, so. Uh, they got their list out about a month ago, and um, for the most part, I agree on it. I know there's been a lot of like controversy between certain cards here or there, and a lot of noise, 
Um, I was only complaining about one card, and, and I thought that card could have been, you know, paid attention a little bit more. But, you know, it is what it is. At the end of the day, um, we work with what he got. And, um, you know, as, as much as I want, you know, a certain card to be hit, or at least limited, um, you know, it's it's what it is for that. So I'm already over it. You know, again, they've been doing a great job for this community, jump-starting um, this Naruto resurgence seven, eight months ago, uh, influencing, uh, you know, the Cali people like Jason and Juan to help start their area. And, and they've been doing a large contribution, doing the, best, the, doing the best that they can to help bring people back to the community uh, with the means necessary and, and what they have at their disposal. And uh, it led to us uh, wanting to jump start. So, you know, this whole thing, I know may not seem progress to some of you guys, but, you know, it could be building up something bigger. And, you know, progress doesn't happen over day. It happens over time. And who knows where else this might lead. You know, we already got the East Coast. Um, we had the West Coast. Hopefully that will rebuild um, soon. And we have the Midwest, so I mean, we just need to get other people locked down. You know, if, if the South want to get down, it's all open ears on here. You know, North, whatever, wherever you guys live, I think, um, you know, we could build a community um, based on, um, you know, our, our states and, and our areas. So, yeah, I'm just rambling off again, but yeah, um, with the deck with the deck choices that I made today was obviously based off of the... Um, <laughs> uh tay up list i went straight to lightning fire uh because i saw the um semi-limited version of kushina and fourth hokage being le uh, legal now and i just thought you know kushina limit uh being back brought back to two is so powerful um being able to get you know four shocker in with her growth ability is, is just too strong um and then with the fourth hokage you know obviously you could have some blowouts with like hydro pump or Rasengan just like back in the day. Uh, but I felt like um, I've, I've tested out Fire Lightning for two weeks uh, straight, pretty hardcore, and I didn't think it was as powerful as I thought it would be. Um, you know, back in the day, I played where, like, Ink Leech was, like, legal to three, and that was just um, an insane format where just, you got early Jitsus going off, Dragon Flames or saying on and all that stuff. But uh, it wasn't as powerful as I thought, and I thought it was okay. So Kushina being being at two, I think, is solid. It's it's OP, I think, in in my standards in terms of gaining shocker early, um, but it wasn't anything game breaking. Uh, fourth Hokage, um, he felt kind of sacky, but um, I I rarely was able to use him as much as I thought, and um, that being because of like the lightning cost. And I think if you're running like a strict mono lightning or something like that, um, you know, popping off the fourth or having him in your hand at the right time can be very deadly. Um, so, I mean, I don't think anybody really um, uh, abused 4th Hokage. I think the only person who played at the tournament was Zeke, and he felt like it was a little bit underwhelming too. So, 4th uh, Hokage at 1, I think it's okay, but I still feel like um, people can get some like luck sacks out of that, and, and I don't think it's that healthy for the game. Um, but... You know, with that, the two weeks of st um, two weeks of uh, uh, grinding that, I felt like it wasn't as aggressive as I thought, and I was already building another deck at that time. So um, I wanted to go a little more um, aggressive, and um, I didn't want to do all the jutsus exchanging and stuff. So I looked at um, you know the female decks, and I also saw another card that was brought back, which was substitute, being the two. And I know that card's been uh, pretty busted back in the day. I never really played it because it was before my block format days. But I saw some combos uh, that I initially wanted to try out, which was Eno, Turn Zero, the Earth Lightning one where you could steal a ninja, uh, a zero drop male ninja, and then put it on your side. Um, so I, I want to do that with like stuff like Sasuke or Choji. Uh, mostly because of Choji because everybody on my team plays him. So being able to... Um, Eno, their Choji, and then next turn, substitute, or not next turn, same turn, substitute, you know, I, I drop, uh, Eno, um, on turn one or whatever, or in turn two, and then substitute was just, uh, a nasty idea, so I wanted to do that. Um, and then also, um, I wanted to try out the shizune Tantan uh, combo, uh, because you could still also substitute out Suzune, um, Suzune for, um, 
another large drop ninja too so those are great and then obviously that led to like kind of like a female deck and um, i looked at all the options i was trying out different kinds of um uh, mental power or uh kanoichi um kimono types things but i felt like the more standard one was was i think more so the well-rounded female deck uh that forced uh female power battles and that was essentially um taken from uh the idea of uh alex's alex blandon's um female deck uh at gen con um i never looked at the deck list i just knew like some of the key cards um so him and like uh got ideas from like him and like ryan severin and stuff when they talked about the female decks um and and knowing how powerful they were and i felt like there were a lot of males still in the format and again with the addition of substitute um uh and in specific cards too i felt like it was going to be a strong uh deck so uh, it wasn't until the very last like week that i put um pressure in the deck and um it was okay it, it wasn't as um powerful as i thought because um well yeah i saw mono water and, and i saw two or three no hand water decks so discarding their hand really wasn't going to be that effective um but it was it was a solid card and um you know it wasn't really my wig condition but i put it in there because it was a good pressure card literally and um you'll see that um in there but it wasn't necessarily like the main um combo of the deck uh that that i wanted to go off all the time um but yeah again uh i talk a lot so we'll go straight to the deck profile it's a female um aggro pressure uh female battle type of deck i guess you could say um and uh yeah let's just go start off obviously the first card that you see is amy uh she's an incredible card um just one of her uh being able to pop a jitsu or mission off your opponent's hand is just uh, way too good um Three Hotarus, uh, she's one of the best ninjas in the game. Draw, growth, um, you know the deal. Uh, two Tamari, excellent ta tactician. Uh, she was very valuable. Uh, being able to either stall against the uh, aggro deck, um, just being able to change her position, she's super, super strong. And um, she really helped out in a lot of the games. Two Hanari. Uh, Hanari was super, super, um, important because there were Genjutsu decks running around, uh, Genjutsu ninjas going around, so, um, I needed to put her in. Uh, she's also a source for information. I mean, this, these cards are very staple cards for a lot of the decks. Um, one, uh, Hyuga Kimono. Uh, Hinata, she is, uh, bumped back into the playable list, and I know with certain cards she could be abused. Um, so I haven't really tried that combo because I didn't want to revolve around sacking into one Hinata and then, you know, having all these cards revolve around her or at least synergize with her. But um, her her effect alone is already busted. Um, you know, when when she's put in play, you flip a coin and if it's heads, your opponent moves, um, your opponent discards one card. If tails, give one damage to one of your ninjas. Um, in a deck that... Um, that likes to heal, like Karen and um, Tsunade, uh, you don't mind getting that injured effect. And then also, if you have her in play, you're going to injure her into, into a 3 0 ninja, so it really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, there's 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 cards in um, you know the format that allows you to flip, obviously, coins. So she's good. Um, she actually helped for like one, one game, just being able to pop a card. And then I did tech in Koharu. Because half of my team was playing like Fire Lightning or some type of Rush. Um, so in case I went against them, obviously if you go to a tournament and you don't know what to expect, you um, sometimes just uh, cater to your teammates because you're most likely to play them. Uh, so Koharu actually did help a little bit. I mean, she helped stalled against like Sasuke and stuff um, if they were able to pull him out. But she's just like a nice little um ninja so your opponent is like rush or anything um so i've seen i've seen the uh sakura that does mental power also and i've seen um you know the the zero mental ninjas uh choji and sasuke so she was very helpful um i ran a lot of zero jobs by the way uh one ten ten um i wasn't able to get her effect off a lot um i mean i, I don't I think my counts 
on wind are a lot more than my earth. It's more like an earth wind build. Um, so I, I wasn't really necessarily popping her effect off as much, but she was just a solid card. Um, you know, 3 0 um, filter cards. Uh, the reason why I showed these cards a little bit later is because I didn't want to hit them on turn zero or that they were very um, uh, underwhelming if you hit them on zero, depending. Uh, Eno, Charm, um, you don't want to start off with her. If you start off first, obviously you don't, you're not going to get her effect. But when she's put in play, you can move one of your opponent's mail ninjas and then just cost a zero to your village. Uh, if it remains in play at the end of the turn, return it. So basically, you would do this if they hit like a Sasuke solo, steal their Sasuke, swing out with Sasuke and Eno for like three battle awards, um, and then just chump block for the next turn. So... Um, with the combo of sub, uh, Substitute coming back at 2, you're more likely to hit this combo. And um, I tested it with 3, but it, just was a, it was just too much. It was clogging. So 2, I think, was the perfect number. You could also uh, growth into this ninja, which is, which is amazing. So you could do that and um, squad or something like that, um, depending on the ninja. Um, and then 2 Tauntauns. Uh, still mad that Tauntaun's not considered a female, but who am I to judge in this day and age? I don't want to assume genders, because people flip out. Uh, so, yeah, none of the, none of the animals um, are, are female in this deck, so I can't really t attack with Tauntaun, but who's going to attack anyways? Uh, but your female ninjas get minus one inch cost, so that applies to, like, Shizune, Splatoon, and Tsunade and stuff. Um... It's just a solid card. Again, you don't want to drop it on turn zero, so I left this as like a turn one, turn one quote unquote drop, or um, turn uh, three because then you could drop the platoon right after. Um, other one drops, other real solid one drops is two Yakimo. She was extremely um, helpful uh, in this tournament uh, because not too many people were playing Genjutsu's uh, combats. Um, I mean, you'd see, like, Kakashi uh, sometimes. Um, that's, like, the old-school Kakashi with Genjutsu. Uh, but, yeah, you wouldn't really see too many Genjutsu's uh, zero drops, aside from, like, Hanari. So uh, she helps stall the game because you, you really want to stall until you get to, like, your platoon and then just kind of uh, hit stuff mid-game with, uh, like, Sakura or uh, Tsunade uh, when you get your rush out. So Yakumo really prevents people from just straight up attacking you because they got that minus two on them. Uh, Karen, of course, uh, really no, no question on it. Uh, no two drops. Um, I didn't play KNS for whatever reason. Um, every time I drop like Sakura, um, where only female ninjas were able to come out to battle, um, I I think the ruling on that was that you know KNS still considered a male. So he, was, so he, she wasn't able to go out to battle. So it just really wasn't fitting the theme with the deck, and it was limited one anyway. So I wasn't gonna even really see it. Um, so I just slotted it for other tech. Um, but three drops. Apologies, gonna ha I had to proxy this because it was an older card, uh, super rare, and it's super hard to get. But um, it's Sakura's Woman's Life. Uh, she's basically the one who initiates. Um, you know, uh, female battles. During the turn that this ninja is put in play, if you only have female ninjas, this team can only be blocked by a team of female-only ninjas. So it checks for that, and, you know, it's an easy two battle wards if you're going to swing with that. And also, valid, it gives all your female, other female ninjas plus one, plus one, and plus one mental power. So this is extremely important uh, for the beatdown aspect. Um, it catches your opponent off guard because um, they don't see the teams becoming really powerful until um, you know you organize them and and you apply the effect where you're like oh, okay well this this team is now plus three total power because of Sakura so she's uh, she is very very helpful one of the main um, cards you uh, basically um, go into um, also two Hinata reserve character. I like the Sonata just because it puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. Uh, if your opponent's not able to hit like a Warhawk or like a the, one of their main uh, mission draws, this card just really sets them back. Uh, when she's put in play, your opponent randomly discards one card. Um, you know, you could drop this on turn two or turn three if Tauntaun's out. And then you could just squad into, um, you know, one of the best uh, squads in the game, um, Hinata Sakura. Uh, when she's put in play, your opponent... Uh, can organize this team 
uh, can organize their team, and then during that turn, um, this is put in play. Only female ninjas can be sent onto battle. So um, it was great. Uh, there are times where I wasn't able to really successfully do it. Uh, that was mostly in, in the top eight match against Roman because of his early drops consisted of a lot of um, female ninjas, such as Hanari, uh, Tamari, I think, uh, Karen. So, I mean, it was really hard to push for that female battle because he'd, he'd always have somebody there to, like, block or something. So I'd rather have Sakura and Hinata out on separate teams um, doing more damage uh, rather than trying to get that effect. Um, next is two Kurenai. Uh, she was very helpful. I'd, I'd probably cut her back to one. Um, I know Alex, my teammate Alex, said that you know he runs two Kurenai and, and it's been doing good for him, but she really wasn't that helpful for me. Um, even if I had like twos, like it just wasn't um, effective. Uh, so I probably cut her back for like another ninja or early drop ninja, maybe. Um, Platoon. Uh, limited one for a reason. I never played Chizune Tauntaun shenanigans back in the day, so being able to experience this firsthand uh, was nuts. Um, and I would get this off for a good amount of the um, turn tournaments throughout the day. Um, you know, I've had this obviously calm strength before and stuff and Sabu, but uh, once you get it off, it's just, you know, deadly. So once she's put in play, you could search for one Sonati card in your deck and put it in play. Um, Tauntaun, platoon it out on like turn three, get Shizune Tauntaun, get Tsunade, and then just swing for like large attacks. So, um, this is no stranger for those who are, you know, who know the deck. Uh, no five drops because you're dropping these early. Again, apologies for the other proxy. But by the way, this is Mardo, Mardo's proxy. Shout out to him. Um, if you guys are looking for cards but you don't have them but you don't want to spend twenty dollars on them or like fifteen dollars on a super rare um he makes amazing proxies and the thickness of it is pretty much very identical to the original um card itself so it's it's just as thick and you could even see like the quality of it too so it's great so shout out to mardo on that and um yeah, hit him up on Messenger. Uh, he's still doing proxies for all the events, so good stuff. Um, and then also two for Sokages. He was really helpful too because of the mastery and being able to get two BRs back against the person who's rushing. Um, actually, I didn't have two for Sokages. Uh, he, initially, it was a Kazikage, and I just took him out for this version. Kazakage didn't do as much as I thought he would to actually surprisingly right um, but I'd rather have first Okage where I'm able to get my BRs back and then push for more uh, damage or um, chains and stuff but uh, Kazakage didn't work out for me maybe he might for other people um, but um, it was great uh, I, I I put in two also just because of uh, mill and stuff I didn't have any answers to mill really in my sideboard um, okay, on to the missions. Uh, pressure. Uh, this is a card that Alex Blandon ran um, during Gen Con and got him uh, tied for first, for a second. Uh, it's a permanent mission. Uh, ninjas with zero or less mental power, including ninjas with no ma mental power, cannot be sent out to battle. However, during your opponent's mission phase, your opponent can discard two cards in their hand to discard the mission card. Uh, this probably only helped like two games. Um, the first being uh, against David Lopez. He was running a Modern Water aggro deck. I wasn't sure how it played out until like turn three or turn four because I was like, oh shoot, you know, am I going to give him advantage if I just give him no hand? But I realized that he wasn't really playing no hand water, so it didn't really matter, so I was still discarding this. Um, and then it also helped in turn four against Ninja Dogs where they didn't, well, basically Ninja Dogs don't have too many Mender Power, if not at all. So they weren't able to swing out early, and that kind of ruined the rush aspect. So they had to lose um, their hand and, and stuff. Uh, I played it also in, in round three against Adam, but um, he was running fire, uh, wind, uh, genjutsu also. And he um, uh, didn't really affect him as much. Uh, maybe stall for like a couple turns, but it was a solid card. It's it's a great card. It's deadly, um, but depending depending on the matchup, um, it's really fifty fifty because there's so many ninjas with mental power in the beginning, 
uh, that people were splashing in, like Hanare, um, Tamari, Ten Tens, like stuff like that. They'll just have like um, random under power. Um, next, I ran two Enos tiers to pair up with Shika's decisions. Basically, because Shika's decisions limited one, I need another way to search out uh, Shizune and Tauntaun. This was extremely helpful because if I wasn't able to get that combo, I would discard a win card to search for uh, Shizune, Tauntaun, Platoon, and uh, Tauntaun, basically, if I didn't have those cards in my hand. So, um, very helpful. And then Chica's Decision, um, for females, it, it's still very good as a one of, and I would search out either for, um, you know, my answers, or like, uh, sometimes Karen if I wanted to heal, um, or just even like a female drop just to get like that extra draw, um, if I have enough mental power, um, you know, Hinata or something, so. Uh, yeah, that was great. I ran one bad dream, um. It was an okay card. Uh, it's permanent when your opponents, uh, when this initial f effect is applied. If you have only female ninjas, draw two cards, and then your female ninjas cannot be affected by the effects of your opponent's uh, male ninjas. So, uh, this is good. I mean, um, the only thing that I was uh, really worried about was um, uh, like Naruto turn five chibi mode, um, or something like that. So, I mean, it was like a, it was like an eh card for me, but. Overall, um, it did its job, it was okay, and uh, I probably wouldn't play another one, even though it's like catered to females. Uh, Training in the Moonlight, that obviously was very helpful. I mean, if I could play three, I'd play three. Um, two Substitute, uh, incredible card. So many combos in this, and, and I definitely want to experience with other decks. Actually, I do already. I already have another deck aside for a Win a Box event, um, which I'll talk about later. Uh, but Substitute... Is incredible. You could uh, search one ninja card in your deck with an inch cost equal to or lower than the target and put it in play, then discard the target. So essentially, you could, you know, pop your Tsunade off that you got from Shizune uh, Tauntaun and then search for your first Akage to get BRs back and stuff. So, end user mastery with like a high level jitsu exchange. So, very helpful. Or if I'm caught up in a bind, you know, get one of like injured ninjas or something like that and then search for a, another ninja. Um, or if I underdrop, search for a more powerful ninja, like a zero drop. Uh, if I have my Eno uh, and I don't need it anymore, then I could just search for like a Hotaru or something like that just to fill up that gap uh, for a substitute if I'm caught in a bind. So it's very helpful. Um, not sure if it's super broken yet, but uh, from testing, I think it's it's solid. Um, it's okay at two. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's a good card. It's a fun card. Uh, I like I like combos. Uh, next is two Battle of the Barrier. I'm not sure how many people played this back in the day. I wasn't sure if there was an effective means, just like how the NVS was, but it's essentially like a watered down NVS. Uh, at the start of the battle phase, uh, each player selects up to three of their female and/or medical ninjas and remove it from their teams. Those um, other ninjas cannot be sent on to battle during this turn. And during the showdown, uh, if a player wins any victory, that player wins one battle award and draws a card. So, uh, very um, game-breaking card for me. Uh, this is a way that I was able to win maybe, I think, two of my games uh, with this card. And um, I may bump it up to one, depending. Uh, it's just a, such a high turn cost, and um, depending on your matchup, your opponent might have females. So um, this is one of the cards that I think would have helped me push um, uh, Roman uh, in the top eight. Um, but he just had his females... Um, to, to block, so I was looking for one more card, and then I would have been pushing for more battle wards, but um, yeah, maybe if I had one more, it would have helped. Um, speaking of one more, um, I was fishing for Soccer's Tears also, it's a limited one, uh, so being able to copy that effect for a turn, um, you know, is, is good too. I definitely, it definitely helped in some of the matchups, um, and I, I used that to win, uh, I think, one of my games. Um, onto the Jitsus, I ran three Ferocious Punch. Uh, one of the best negations in the game, hands down. It costs a win and random, so that's easy. Uh, requirements are female or medical. And uh, target one Jitsu, you negate the target and then discard it. And you give one damage to the user. And then if the expert user is Tsunade, uh, I win one battle ward. That happened once. Um, and it was uh, such a cheesy way to kind of like win one. So uh, 
it, it was very valuable. Three of them, absolutely necessary in this deck. I ran one Infuriation because one of my teammates, Kaena, also ran a Kimono deck, and they they randomly put this card in for testing, and it did really well for them. And I read it, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, this is a pretty helpful effect. Um, something that uh, I needed for my deck was a little bit more damage. Um, and this was for three Chakra, basically. And um, ba you target every male ninja in the user's team and the team battle against the user. You give one damage to the target. Additionally, if the user is Tsunade, give additional damage to the target. So basically, uh, the, the whole team is going to be wiped out to damage. Um, I probably would include another one um, in this, in this uh, deck just because my whole deck is females. Um, so three Chakra, you know, that's just like a... Equivalent to like an infinite embrace or like a fear bag in jitsu where, um, you know, instead of pushing them or moving them, they're going to get too damaged. So it's a, it's a nice like semi-removal jitsu. Um, in, in that place, I played one detonating kunai. Uh, the reasoning behind this was for other mental decks, other uh, mirror decks, uh, if they decide to use like um, mental power or a um, mind transfer exchange, I could chain of this, you know, for two chakra, I could get plus three mental power, or plus two, plus two, and then um, if the higher cost is paid, uh, your opponent discards one random card from the hand, which is generally what I do. Um, again, it's it's not a complete hand discard deck, uh, but it will annoy you because there are some cards that pick off from your um, hand, basically, like Hanade, Amy, Pressure, stuff like that. Um, I, if I found room in the sideboard, I would. I mean, this is more like a sideboard card, but it's more like a tech on my part uh, because I knew people were, were going to play like uh, mind transfers or like mental power stuff. Uh, one infinite embrace, limited one for a reason. Um, it's a great card because you're removing them from game and all that stuff, and it's very powerful. And one hydro pump because uh, being able to hydro pump on turn three, which I did, uh, really hurts your opponent. Um, and it's just uh, really uh, messed up. Um, yeah, so that's the main deck. Um, let's go with the sideboard. Uh, sideboard, I went with two comp strengths. Um, solid card. I couldn't find room in the main deck. I might actually, depending on switching some cards around. Uh, comp strength is always a solid card. There are a lot of ninja effects out there that you just got to watch out for. Um, uh, Genjutsu user stuff like Obito turn three. Uh, mono water like Swagetsu, um, who also shuts off effects. Um, Susanos, uh, like just there, there's a lot. Uh, two self conversations. Maybe I'd also try to find this in the main deck, but um, you're gonna need some type of mission negation in this game because your opponent might run like game breaking missions that you may not be prepared for, and um, if you if you're not gonna um, have that answer in the sideboard, then um, you're gonna have to find another way to really like rush them or um, discard that card from their hand. Um, two Hina. Um, I felt like somebody was going to be playing like some type of like um, mill deck and I was right and it was David Albron. So unfortunately and I haven't played him. I never played him actually uh, so far. Uh, he went to our locals uh, last week and also uh, we never got to play a casual game at all. Um, but he knows definitely something that you would just side out for and you know, it's, it's a great card overall um, for your sideboard uh, one Zetsu um, because um, Coming into a tournament where you don't know what the meta is really, you know being able to shut off ninja effects is great so Zetsu is basically an answer for multiple cards um, you know the fact text of your opponent's track ninja is negated so I was going to use this on like my teammate Alex Pullman's uh, Kakashi, so he doesn't grab his Chidori's and stuff, um, or against like Mono Water, uh, Mono Water things like, or uh, Naruto um, Tail Beast mode uh, that turn five. Uh, so there, there's a lot of ninjas like shut off um, that would be very powerful, and Zetsu um, was there for that. And I did try to sign him in for my first um, match against like Daydar Fire Wrath. Um, it was a permanent earth stall, so it was alright. Uh, one Shimon for put and play. Uh, obviously, people know that I ran Shimon at Gen Con for the reasoning because there's so much put and play, and there's still so much put and play in this game. Um, it was just it just made sense. I wasn't. Uh, I know this was contradict my deck because um, then I can't platoon out Shizune Tantan. 
uh, to Sonate, but I would put him put him in like right after that platoon because um, most of the reinforcements are you know turn five six or greater. So Shimon prevents that and things like Inkfish and random things. Similarly, uh, Eno, uh, she prevents from your opponent from putting multiple stuff in play, um, or each player at least. Uh, but more importantly, the fact text of your opponent's head ninjas are negated, so if I were to go against like a void deck or um, like some type of like a, a fire lightning or like a rush um, or like dogs, uh, which I did, like animals, um, it's a great card. And it obviously fits with the earth stuff. And one Will of the Youth. Um, I probably would have added a second one, honestly. Uh, Will of the Youth is one of my favorite sideboard cards. Uh, each player's ninjas cannot be removed by um, removed from play from the effects of their opponent's jitsu cards. Uh, so basically it stops cards like Infinite Embrace, Hydro Pump, stuff that I would play, but it was mainly there against Charlie. Uh, Charlie... Um, like you guys know already, won first place in our event with his particle style, uh, Jitsu Satusa style deck, and his main Jitsu removes from play that and like Hydro Pump and stuff. So um, this is definitely a card that I didn't see too many people sideboard um, or at least use. And if I ran Fire Lightning or some type of effect, um, I would definitely put Will of the Youth in um, because it has such a strong effect and and it does it definitely does like uh, prevent a lot of decks out there from you know really going off. So yeah, Will of the Youth was it was good. Um, I never got to side it out though against like stuff like in top because uh, I I didn't go against Charlie, but I, I was confident with the matchup because uh, we played several um, test uh, test decks uh, for a bit, and um, he just if if I was able to rush with my Sunade, then then I could get him before he gets to his Satusas. But uh, yeah, uh, and then the reinforcements are just like typical stuff. Um, uh, Sakura, Hinata, um, uh, Sakura, Tsunade, and then the rest, really, I, I never got into, um, unless I was able to, like, steal them somehow. If somebody ran, like, a turn zero Naruto that draws or whatever, um, which probably actually wouldn't really work because I'd need turn three. Um, but I just had them there, like, in my sideboard, just, just, just to fill up my sideboard and everything. But, um, yeah, that was a deck... Um, I mean, it was, it was a solid deck. Uh, in Swiss, I, I finished 3-1. Round 1, my only loss was to Glenn. He ran a permanent earth stall deck that revolved around Zetsu coins and uh, determination to protect. So basically, you would just put coins on that mission, and ninjas cannot be sent out to battle. So he would stall until like turn 7, 8, 9, where he could get enough ninjas on the field where he could just start popping off with uh, stuff like Daydara Fire Yath. And I didn't have anything in the main board to really crush that. Uh, so it wasn't until the second game where I cited, out, like, cited in stuff like uh, self-conversations, um, uh, comp strength to negate uh, Daydara, and also, um, what was that called, uh, Zetsu. But my second game, he actually um, had more ninjas than me, and he was able to rush, um, rush for that. Uh, round two, I went against David Lopez, won against him, and round three, Adam, Fire, win Genjutsu, uh, win Genjutsu, won against him, and then round four was against Maddie with Ninja Dogs. And then top eight, I just lost to Roman. Um, uh, my second game, I multi four and missed my zero, one, and two drops. So it sucked, but you know, it is what it is, and I had a great time, and I know my deck profile is running a lot, so catch you later.